All right, so I was only going to do one Delta Rune Theory. I was only going to do one, wait until part three, and that would be the end of it. However, we need to get to the bottom of what's going on with Gaster. This theory will cover these specific elements. I'm going to get into the survey program at the beginning of Undertale. I'm going to get into Gaster and the discarded vessel character, and I'm going to get into Sands and Papyrus. First, I want to talk about Gaster's relation to the Skeleton Brothers. Sans and Papyrus are both named after fonts, and W.D. Gaster, also known as Wingding's Aster, is named after two separate fonts. So I believe Wingding's Gaster is a relative of the Skeleton Brothers in some way. Maybe a father of some kind. To talk about Gaster, we need to use evidence from Undertale. Gaster used to be the royal scientist to King Asgore before he, quote, fell into his creation and was lost. It never says the creation he fell into was the core, but if you're paying close attention, you may be able to pick up on what exactly he fell into. Entry number 17, dark, darker, yet darker, the darkness keeps growing, the shadows cutting deeper, photon readings negative, this next experiment seems very, very interesting. What do you two think? Lines like dark, darker, yet darker, and photon readings negative make me think exactly what Gaster fell into was a dark world. Now, bear with me, because I'm going to have to talk about Undertale's link to Deltarune. I know I made a big deal about Deltarune's lore standing on its own, but bear with me. I do believe Entry 17 refers to Gaster from the Undertale universe, but it's still relevant to Deltarune, because Gaster is not the Gaster from the Deltarune universe, but a Gaster from the Undertale universe. In this theory, I will argue that the dark worlds created in Undertale will link to the light world of Deltarune, and dark worlds can, in a sense, be able to travel the multiverse. So, what happened? Here's what I think happened. Gaster entered a dark world, but through a series of events, his link to Undertale was somehow severed. We don't know how. So now, Gaster is lost in the dark world. However, this is not necessarily a hopeless situation. Gaster has two hopes for his freedom from the dark world. His first hope is his two associates. Who are they? The two main accepted theories are that these are either Sans and Papyrus, or Sans and Alphys. I tend to lean towards the idea of Sans and Papyrus. Now, the statement from Undertale that said those two skeletons just showed up one day and asserted themselves, and Sans' statement that he wants to go back, may imply that they're from Deltarune. But I have a different theory. First of all, the building Sans appears in is clearly just the old Grilby's building, with Grilby's name erased and given Sans' name as a title. So this, to me, implies that Sans just fucking took the building with him from the Undertale universe. It doesn't make a lot of sense that Sans would erase a character's name and write his own name unless it was originally a Grilby's building he multiverse traveled with. So Undertale's story happens first in this multiversal timeline. Now, are Sans and Papyrus originally from Undertale? Maybe, maybe not. They may be from another third world we never found out about with its own Asgore, own core, and own royal scientist. I'm not going to go too far into that idea, though. For now, I'll just say they're from Undertale. And Sans' talk about going back is more so about going back to the days when he was younger and Gaster wasn't lost in the Dark World. He and his brother were probably a lot happier then, but nowadays they cope with the loss of someone they cared about in different ways. Papyrus tries to get over the event by throwing himself into work by making puzzles, but still has a hidden trauma from the experience. Sans has essentially given up on life, but hides his misery by telling jokes and tries to keep everyone else happy. I think the hidden lab behind Sans's house is Gaster's personal lab, separate from the royal lab in case he ever wanted to work from home. So my theory is that Sans and Papyrus are trying to find an opening to the dark world Gaster is hidden in, which they're expecting to find in the Deltarune light world. How did they traverse the universe? Through the broken machine, of course. Unless the machine creates dark worlds. I don't know. This would likely take place after the pacifist or neutral routes. And another dark theory to just bring up and do nothing with through the rest of the video. It's possible Papyrus is in a Schrodinger's cat situation where he might be dead in that house, and Sans could use it as a guilt trip if he finds out we killed him in one of our save files for Undertale. Small theory, 
that is a possible thing for game developers to do because I know Scott Cawthon did it with FNAF World probably accidentally <laughs> um, but if Toby Fox does find out a way to link whatever happens with Papyrus to your Undertale save file that would be crazy uh, but that's not the theory for today so we're going to move on with our lives I think the coolest option would be if this was a post-pacifist Sans, and the pacifist route gave him hope that there could be a good ending for Gaster as well. It also makes sense why he could just uproot Grilby's bar and take it with him if Grilby's moved to the surface and left his shop behind. So now we have Gaster stuck in a dark world, and Sans and Papyrus in the Deltarune light world trying to find a way to save him. But Gaster is also trying to save himself. How does he do it? Well, he is a scientist, and instead of waiting for Sans and Papyrus to save him, he gets to work on his own plan to get himself out of there. He creates a device to reach us, the player, the angel, and when the angel hears Gaster's prayer, he answers. But how is the angel going to open the path to Gaster? Well, it may be unnatural, but Gaster would have to make a vessel for the player to control. He would have to create his own life form. The vessel in the survey program. He lets us customize it, give it a name, and doesn't even care whether or not we love this creation. But here's the thing. We don't know how the creation feels about us. People have pointed out that the voice very closely linked to Gaster is replaced by someone else as soon as our vessel is created. People have looked at the change in text from a very Gaster-style text and switching to that which seems most similar to Chara from the first game. I'm not going to go into detail about the Japanese version and why this character's speech patterns match closest with Chara. There are other videos that go into detail and understand speech better and it's better than I do. But here's the thing. If this is following a pacifist or neutral route, why would Chara be the villain? After all, Chara is not a monster, merely the actions of the player. That's because it's not Chara. It's the Delta Worlds parallel to Chara. Goner suicide theory. The original Undertale had very subtle clues that Chara climbed Mount Ebot for, quote, a very unhappy reason. Many people have theorized that the reason Chara climbed the mountain was to commit suicide. This is not a new thing. And who would be the Delta Worlds parallel to Chara? Not Chris, but the character we name, the character we create, the character we program the personality of, our vessel. Now, why would the character kill themselves? They only have two lines. Will now be discarded, and no one can choose who they are in this world. They were frustrated with the lack of control in their lives and wanted to end it all. They refused to have someone else hold control over their lives, regardless of if this character loved them, and they destroyed the vessel, freeing themselves. This would force us, in our desire to help Gaster, Settling for an already existing vessel, Chris. Now, before we go into this theory further, we have to discuss how the soul is technically its own character, and even though it represents the player, which gets into the whole soul and Chris holding sway over Rousey's knowledge of various prophecies, even though we don't get to play as them. Uh, again, same thing with Char in the first game. The angel is its own character, and also us. Uh, I did a whole theory on that a while ago where I explained that a lot better. Uh, but I will say that after this Gaster theory, I may need to rethink elements of that video. I may need to think rel rethink elements of that video. Because it is possible that the soul of the angel doesn't actually speak to Rousey. But that Chris just told Rousey about the roaring for some reason. You know? So Gaster's motives are not to cause the roaring or be this big final boss of the game. His goal is not to banish the angel's heaven. He wants to free he wants to be free from the dark world, and he wants to see his skeleton relatives again. He is Undertale's equivalent to Des, one who gets lost in the dark world, and his only hope is that someone in another world will remember him and come to rescue him. His vessel refuses and takes their own life in a dark twist of events. 
So that's what I think Gaster's role in the story is. I don't think he's the big bad. I don't think he's the big bad pulling everyone's strings. But I do think he's important. He could be a secret boss in the same vein as Spamton and Jevil. He could be a main boss in the vein of Queen or King. Uh, we don't know. He could even be a character that doesn't want to fight us. He just knows that once he sees us, we're his way out. That's what I think is going on with Gaster. Um, at the same time, I don't know how Deltarune's going to progress. I ju that's just my theory for what's going on with Gaster. That's my theory. This lore is very complicated, and we have very few answers right now. Um, but I will say, um, I'm interested. Uh, before I end the video, I do want to talk about how there could have been a huge jump in time between the survey program and when we wake up in Chapter 1. There could have been a huge span of time uh, that was just skipped over. And this could have been years and years. Our soul could have been attached to Chris the moment she was born. That is a very big possibility. So our plan A failed and killed themselves. Now we have to use Chris for this. Um, and Chris is experiencing a lot of those same feelings our original vessel probably felt. And that original vessel could have been alive for a few years. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it killed itself the moment it was born. It just means that Chris is basically the second version of that, and their life is paralleling that original vessel that we didn't get to use. So with that, there could be a very dark ending for Chris. And it could be an ending that we prevent. It could be. Uh, I still think the final boss of the game will be us versus Chris. I still think that's going to be the final boss of the game. Um, but I do have to rethink a little bit about my original theory I don't think I'm going to redo it. I'm going to wait for Chapter 3 to come out. Um, but yeah, that's what I think is going on with Gaster. Is there another character you want me to make a theory on? Uh, I know that Alvin uh, is a character that a lot of people are um, interested about. I know that... Uh, Al Alvin's the one off the top of my head... Uh, but I know Noel's entire family could have a theory in of themselves. Um, I haven't covered the secret bosses too much, honestly. Uh, I, I mentioned them briefly in my first video. Um, yeah, well, just let me know if there's any character you want a theory on. And I might do another Delta in Theory before Chapter 3. Um... But if it's fine with everyone else, I mostly just want to wait for Chapter 3 and find out what information that is going to give us before we move into anything weird. <laughs>